the next session is about some of the exciting things going on much more broadly across gaming. Um, TikTok, Singtel, uh, 5G. Uh, but first, um, I caught up with Robbie Lim earlier this week from Twitch. He does, he, he's in the US. To quickly understand some of the Asian, tr tr Asian trends um, and what's exciting for Twitch right now. So thanks to the World Wide Web, um, I'm now going to take you all, either live here or online, I'm going to take you all to my bedroom, uh, where we're going to find Jasper, ready to talk to Robbie. After this, we're going to meet Vanessa Brown from TikTok and then Shilpa Agarwal from Singtel. But first, it's over to you, Jasper. Thank you, Jasper. Um, and hey, Robbie, uh, welcome to Gaming Matters. Um, so let's just jump straight in and tell me, uh, what's your role at Twitch and, and what are your priorities right now? Sure thing, Jasper. Thanks for having me. So I lead the BD function for Asia Pacific at Twitch. I've been here close to four years and it really comes down to, to three main things. The first is our partnerships with game publishers in the region. The second is esports in the region. And third is what we call channel, which is really around working with some of our enterprise partners, um, mainly in the telco space. But fundamentally, what I think is my role is I, I truly believe that APAC is the center of the gaming world. And it's been shifting this way for quite some time now, uh, where both publishers as well as the audience uh, are just incredibly uh, passionate about the gaming space. And Twitch, in, in my opinion, is the center of the gaming culture. And so I want to make sure that our audience, our streamers, anyone who's engaging with Twitch uh, can really tap into, engage, and provide uh, and be part of that community on the gaming side. And that's really what uh, the function of, of business development is. And so whether it's uh, the next Escape from Tarkov, uh, you know, drops campaign, or the Valorant uh, beta launch, I want to make sure that that's the best possible experience and we're working with the publisher as well as streamers uh, to bring the best possible content and the most differentiated experience for both streamers and viewers alike uh, to Twitch. So so, so, so um, looking a little bit backwards, how, how, how you say Asia Pacific is the, the center of the universe. Um, how how has uh, gaming grown in, in Asia Pacific in the past year or so? And then looking forward, what are some of the trends that you're seeing with new games launching and, and the the kind of what what kind of games have been growing? Yeah, so I think there are two uh, major trends happening right now that I see front and center. And one is that we're seeing publishers from the West. Uh, try to come to APAC and really provide a differentiated and localized experience. We work with Dead by Daylight in Taiwan to do a full-on uh, content end-to-end -end month for the Taiwan Ghost Festival month uh, throughout the month of August. And we did a bunch of, of content giveaways. We did some exclusives. We did some previews for Dead by Daylight content. And then we also ran uh, uh, some mini streamer battles uh, of streamers playing in, in competitive events against each other. And then we finally took over uh, a bunch of subway stations in Taiwan, uh, Dead by Daylight plus Twitch, uh, to let uh, the community know that this, this was happening. And so we're seeing a lot more publishers come to us from the West uh, to try and provide localized content in APAC. And secondly, I think this is it's actually a bigger trend is we're seeing a lot of publishers from APAC uh, go the other way and want to launch games out globally, uh, and particularly in the United States and, and Europe uh, from APAC. And always, we historically saw this a lot with, with uh, the Japanese publishers in Japan, uh, but now we're seeing this more and more so out of Korea. We're seeing a lot of activity out of China. And uh, this is not only the big studios, we're seeing a, a lot of smaller studios, a lot of startups come and, and pitch ideas and have content that, you know, I think actually translates really well globally. Uh, one of the big success stories has been Genshin Impact, and it's a new type of, of uh, uh, it's a new type of, of marketing campaign that we're running with them. And we're going to see a bunch of new interesting things uh, later on uh, this year in partnership with, with MiHoYo. And, uh, I think that that 
the what what they've been able to do uh, in terms of reaching a global audience uh, out of Shanghai has been has been uh, really remarkable to see. And uh, you know, we we've, we've been doing these these streams, these reveals with Genshin, and it's really getting a ton of traffic and a ton of traction globally. And uh, that's been that's been one of the biggest, if not the biggest, trend I've seen is is games going from APAC global. That's awesome. It's great. It's great to hear that we are. We seem to be in the right place at the right time. Um, so, so finally, we you mentioned Twitch drops earlier on. Um, tell us a little bit more. What are what are Twitch drops, and 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 what can viewers expect to see? Twitch drops is, in my opinion, uh, one of uh, one of the products that that I just am in love with. That you know, working with Twitch and working with publishers, it seems to be a win win win. And basically, it's it's. Uh, you know, you can watch Twitch, and uh, you can you can basically, uh, you know, secure these in-game items. Uh, so, f so for example, if I'm watching Escape from Tarkov, I might be able to get a special uh, skin in the game or a special gun from watching Twitch. And the alternative to that is either buying it in the game, or or somehow, you know, uh, beating some levels or beating a boss to to acquire this weapon. And instead, you can watch Twitch and what what this does is it really brings a unique set of content to to Twitch and to streamers, and when streamers engage with drops, they see a lot of new followers come in. They see a lot of of a, a diverse set of audience uh, come in come into the place to to watch them stream, and uh, they see their numbers, their CCU and subscribers go up as well. Uh, publishers love it because uh, it, it really helps to invigorate the community. We see a lot of people actually you know earn an item or or, or watch twitch and, and and secure an item from watching twitch and then go back into the game and play the game and so it's people who haven't played that game in a long time maybe they they are watching twitch they get an item and they go back and play it and it's a lot of people playing for the first time uh, oftentimes when we launch drops programs we actually see the servers of the game publisher crash because we're seeing so much traffic go back to to playing that game and what I'm really excited about Drops is that we have a, a number of new programs that we're launching later this year that should take Drops to a whole new level. I can't really talk a whole lot about them, but uh, if, if you're a publisher, please reach out. We want to work with you. Uh, we, we've actually doubled the, the number of publishers we've worked with in Asia Pacific this year alone, and we're looking to double down next year. Uh, I really believe that, that, that APAC is the center of the gaming world, and more and more activity is going to come out of this region. Uh, and, and hopefully Twitch can help be the center of, of the gaming culture for APAC and globally. So I'm looking forward to talk with, talking with more publishers out there. Fantastic. Well, look, Robbie, it's great meeting you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us virtually. Hopefully this time next year, we'll see you live in real life uh, at Gaming Matters in Singapore. Uh, but, but for now, thank you for joining. And it's back to you, Jasper. That's not weird, is it? Um, Love what you've done with your hair, Jasper. Um, so thank you, Robbie. Uh, we had a few internet connection issues there because he's in Silicon Valley where they don't have the internet. Um, but we had a very short space of time to interview him. So, uh, but the audio was good and there were some very interesting things he was talking about. Okay, um, up next, we're going to meet two great ladies. Um, we're going to start with TikTok and then, then we'll sit down with Singtel as well. Um, but to see a few slides about a really cool thing going on in Indonesia right now, please welcome the Director of Business Development for APAC at TikTok, uh, Vanessa Brown. Hi, everybody. Thanks for hanging in there for the last lot of the day. Hopefully, we can share some, some good information for you today and talk a bit about the program that we're running at TikTok called the greatest gamer in Indonesia. So I think you've heard from a lot of um, talkers today and a lot of panelists and speakers, everyone's looking at the growth of gaming year on year, particularly in our region, in Southeast Asia, in APAC, and then also globally. So in response to a lot of that at TikTok, we are seeing the same growth. We're seeing the growth of you know, people coming onto our platform to create content, and we're seeing the growth of gaming across the region and across the world. So in response to that, we have built a program called The Greatest Gamer, and we're piloting it in Indonesia. And I'm really excited to share some information with you about it today. 
It actually, we went live yesterday in Indonesia, so it's a very exciting and crazy week for us. But let me kind of share with you some information about The Greatest Gamer. So The Greatest Gamer is essentially a program that we have made at TikTok. And it's a gaming content series um, in which we've invited or asked applicants across all of Indonesia to apply to be selected to be one of the 10 contestants, um, all amateur gamers uh, who want to take part in a four-week tournament. Uh, and the prize for those, for the contestants, is a very exciting cash prize of 100 million Indonesia rupiah. But I think more importantly for gaming, it's, it's a pro contract with one of the leading esports team, Team EVOS, in Indonesia. So we really thought, you know, by building this program, we were staying true to our mission as TikTok, which is all about inspiring creativity and bringing joy, but really recognizing the growth and the passion that we're seeing around the gaming content coming onto the platform. So the program will run for four weeks. Yesterday, our 10 contestants who were selected have gone into a house in, just outside of Jakarta, Indonesia, and they will spend four weeks in the house going through a lot of different challenges, both gaming challenges and real world challenges. And of course, one person will be successful and become the greatest gamer and win the prize. Um, it's, a, it's a really exciting program for us because it really starts to tap into the culture and it really it gives you a real window into what it takes to be an esports, a pro esports um, gamer. You know, we talk a lot, we heard the, the, the panel before talk about the growth of esports and telling the stories of esports. We really wanted to give back to the gaming community that's, that's coming on to TikTok by building some content and building a real window into understanding what it takes to be an esports gamer. I think there's so much more these days than, than, than what is known. And this series will really follow the 10 contestants. It'll tell their stories. It'll give all of our viewers, our audiences, a real window to see what's required, the mental fortitude, the mental strength, you know, the, the, the health, the fitness, all the different elements that we will bring through the content and the challenge that we give these contestants to see who is the greatest gamer. So that's, that's the kind of the basis of the series. I think it's the first time it's been done in Asia and it's really exciting for us. Like I said, we launched yesterday and we've had a fantastic response. We also ran an audition campaign um, for a couple of weeks across Indonesia and we invited Indonesians to apply to be on the program. And we were you know, blown away. We had over 5,000 applications of people who wanted to apply to be on The Greatest Gamer. So a lot of work for our casting directors to work through all of those applications and choose 10 who went into the house yesterday. So as part of the program, we've been really lucky to work with some, some brilliant partners in Indonesia. So we have Link Arja, who is our advertising partner. So one of the e-wallets in Indonesia who are a fantastic partner to work with. And then, of course, we've got Telkomsel, one of the leading telco companies in the country. We've got Team Evos, one of the leading esports countries. And we've got Mobile Legends as the game that the series is centered around. So we've got some, some fantastic partners to, to help us create um, awareness and buzz and really get this series off the ground. Can we have the first video, please, Nibs? Just one video here is to show you a bit of a call out. We're doing a lot of work with Team Evos. They will help mentor the, the contestants. They'll help coach them. We'll have their coaches involved, their players involved. And this was the call out video we did. Apologies, it's in Bahasa for, for any Bahasa speakers, but this is one of our videos that, that has been running over the audition phase. Evos itu udah terkenal tren banget. Banyak banget pro player muda yang lahir dari Evos. Buat kalian yang tertarik jadi bagian dari keluarga EVOS, yuk ikutan audisi The Greatest Gamer, hadiahnya 100 juta rupiah. Ditambah lagi, pemenangnya dapat kontrak dengan EVOS. Keren kan? Buat kalian yang berumur 18 tahun ke atas, cowok atau cewek suka main MLBB, tinggal upload gameplay kalian ke TikTok dengan hashtag saya ikut TGG. Jangan lupa juga buat video introduction diri kalian tentang apapun mengenai MLBB, apa role kalian dalam tim, sudah pernah juara apa saja, dan kenapa kalian mau join Ifosfam. Dan jangan lupa follow account at the greatest gamer ID. Untuk lebih detailnya, kalian bisa langsung ke official page the greatest gamer. So good luck. That was one of the videos which which helped um, you know get. 5,000 people across Indonesia applying to be on the program with us. Um, but like I said before, and I think you probably heard it from other speakers today, the panel before, 
Um, gaming is, is becoming more and more widespread across the, the different regions. We're seeing a lot in SEA, a lot in APAC. But we're also finding in TikTok, as we sit and look at the platform, you know, we, we really build niche communities and audiences on TikTok, and it's a real place for them to find their, their kind of tribe. And we're seeing a lot of gaming content come onto the platform. So we are seeing, you know, 300% year-on-year growth of videos in, in this region and across the world of people bringing their short form and bringing their videos onto TikTok. And it's really nice to watch the creators um, push boundaries and do things differently. It could be gaming, you know, gameplay from their favorite games, or it's recreating their favorite games, or it's cosplay, or the amount of content that's coming onto our platform with, around gaming is phenomenal. And we're always blown away by how creative the creators that we see on the platform are. So what we've done here with The Greatest Gamer is really in response to what we're seeing from our communities on the platform. So like I said, we launched yesterday. It was quite a stressful week for us, but it's all up and running. Um, we've taken the 10 contestants. We obviously had to build a very COVID safe set. Everyone's been vaccinated and tested. We have put them into the house and the, comp the competition has begun. We had our first live stream last night, which was really successful in Indonesia. So I'd encourage you all to go on to log on and look at The Greatest Game on TikTok and follow the stories of these 10 contestants. Um, working with different KOLs, with different EVOS players, with the EVOS coaches, to really shine a light on what's required to be an eSports player and see who, who's going to win the tournament and, and win a pro contract with EVOS. Last video, please. That's what we have, guys. That's, that's the program that we have running. We're obviously, we're piloting it in Indonesia, hoping that it's great success and then we can launch it across other markets in Southeast Asia, APAC, and even globally. You know, our, our colleagues in North America and in Europe are looking at it saying, let's try and bring it to other markets around the world. So exciting times for us, and it really is trying to, you know, give TikTok, who's all about inspiring creativity and bringing joy, a real kind of, you know, place and home for the gaming community on our platform. Thanks, Jasper. Thank you, Vanessa. That was awesome. Um, now, we're also going to invite Shilpa from Singtel. Please come and join us. If you want to take a, a seat there. I believe these are correctly socially distanced. Please sit in the middle. Um, thank you for that. So, Shilpa, we're going to come to you in a second. But, Vanessa, um, having watched the, the, the videos and stuff, um, I know your business development, but there's, there's gamers here and gamers watching the, the live stream. Um, what advice can you give to gamers who might want to work with TikTok? Um, I often say the same thing to anyone who wants to be on TikTok. Go and spend some time on the program, on the platform. So, you know, if you're a gamer, spend time on TikTok and really understand what people are doing and how they're using the platform, what content is being created. And then just create some content that's authentic to you because that's what TikTok's all about. It's about being authentic and being creative and and taking what's your passion and what you want to do to try and create some content to be on the platform. Um, there's lots of opportunities on that platform and there's lots of ways to kind of be authentic to who you are. That's a very, that's a very, you know, it's a real unique thing about TikTok is the authenticity and the communities really support each other. So you'll see the gaming community supporting the gaming community. So don't feel, don't feel afraid to take a few risks. But get into the platform. You'll start to see the trends. You'll start to see what people are doing. There's lots of tools to be creative. Just try it out and then just keep testing and learning. So and then aside to the gamers that are with us today, there's a lot of business uh, community here today. And um, what advice can you give potential business partners wanting to work with you? That's, that's a good question. I think there's lots of opportunities to reach gaming communities and audiences on the platforms. Obviously, we have 
you know, strong ad solutions for those gamers as well. But you can see with um, The Greatest Gamer, we've worked closely with Linkaja as the advertising sponsor. And it's been a really nice association. It's really early days, but we're doing a lot for Linkaja and our other partners in the program to, uh, to, to integrate authentically, to build some nice content, to be associated with the stories that we're going to tell. Um, so there's lots of opportunities across the platform as businesses to reach that really engaged gaming community. Fantastic. Well, thank you for, for bringing the story here. Congratulations on launching it. Good luck with the, well, you heard the global rollout. Um, but, but Shilpa, um, you're the VP of marketing for Singtel. Um, your bio online is the greatest bio ever because it just says, I lead the mobile and content business for Singtel. And that's it. It's like, it's so easy. So, so what do your family think that you do for a living? Do you have a... We might need a microphone. Okay, I can use that. Thank you. Um, I think, like you said, uh, it's, it's simple, and, and we've been doing this for many years, um, right from uh, simple video solutions to all the way to gaming. Um, and, and we feel very, very, very powerful in the sense to bring some of the new technologies, whether it's uh, you know, platforms like TikTok, um, at the back of our powerful network. Um, and I think that's our core business, um, you know, bringing new stuff to our consumers and giving them something to you know, enjoy, especially in these times. Yeah, yeah. And, and now I know, I know that you're on the, the mobile content side of things you're not the you know, make it very clear you're not the gaming specialist but i think the two or three gaming specialists are in the room today um but what is your what is singtel's re role in the gaming ecosystem because you actually do quite a lot right yeah i think we've been um in this business for a while now um i think we started with offering smaller game solutions to I think almost two or three years ago when we got into esports and pvp sports which is um, almost an gaming agnostic platform solutions that we provide for both amateurs as well as uh, professionals. We run leaks. Um, and now more recently with our all powerful 5G network, we are quite looking forward to getting into you know, new areas of mobile gaming, including cloud gaming. So I think that's what's uh, keeping us going for now in the gaming space. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about 5G um, in, a, in a moment, but We've got a couple of videos. Uh, if we could run, they're pretty short, so we can run them back to back, actually. Can we, can we see the two videos, please? So it's fast. It's really fast. <laughs> um, and let's see the other video. That's pretty cool. So, so apart from using the word fast, how is 5G going to affect gaming? What, tell us more about Singtel, 5G, gaming, entertainment, all of that. Yeah, I think the, um, a lot of people think that 5G is um, out there and it's not here. And I think that's what we want to disprove, that it's very much now and, and we can leverage it now. Um, apart from it just being fast, which I think most gamers will appreciate, I think the lower latency, which basically means that the ability to download games and play response time being a lot lower, 
Imagine in a scenario where there are multiplayer games, you know, for example, Fortnite today puts a limit on the number of gamers that can play at the same time, but if there's no limit, you want to do multiplayer games, run it online, on a TikTok kind of a platform for hundred and you know millions of viewers to watch on YouTube or Twitch. I think you need an extremely powerful network which has extremely low latency for people to play and compete on. And I think that's what the beauty of 5G will be all about. I think apart from that, um, what 5G will also do is bring, um, reduce the lower and lower the entry barriers. That means I don't need to have a very smart device or an Xbox to be a gamer. I can do it on my mobile phone and everything will, processing power will run on cloud, which is going to be brilliant because today, if mobile gaming is only 20 or 30 percent of the pool, it will balloon to around, you know, 60 to 70 percent of the gaming population. And I think that's what we aim, that everybody today who's a casual gamer can actually just play beyond the dots and the circles game to play in PUBG, yeah, you know, and I think play it uh, on a league pay professionally and, you know, take, take part in it. I think that's what our aspiration would be. And I think the, um, you know, it's not like it's going to happen in, in any near future. I think it's going to happen now. Uh, Milan uh, just held its uh, gaming fest this year. Uh, and the final of the Milan Gaming Fest was actually held on a 5G network. So PUBG was actually based on 5G with 200,000 live viewers and millions of people watching it on YouTube. So I think that's the power. I don't need to have be in a place which is fiber connected. I can play it from anywhere. Um, and I think that's, that's what we are hoping to democratize and then just take the game from Xbox and PS5s of the world to your normal mobile phones. Um, and can I also ask you, because we're so, we've got so many interests in so many different verticals, aside from gaming, what else is you, what, what, what are the other things you can see, what other entertainment verticals can you see really benefiting from 5G? I think the um, bringing AR, VR into this, even in the gaming scenario, or, you know, you know, we're working very closely with TikTok on some of these things already is going to be very interesting. Again, not having the lag and, um, you know, having a very high speed and uninterrupted network will just make, you know, um, uh, alternate realities to be out here. I think that we believe will be very uh, powerful and, and next generation entertainment by itself. Whether it's on platforms, it could be even on content, you know, um, Facebook is, is getting big into the AR world and Microsoft's getting big into the AR world. So I think we're very hopeful with a lot of these people getting in, the network will support, uh, and then we can provide our customers and, and subscribers uh, those experiences. Cool. Well, obviously very, very exciting time for, for everything. Now, we've got TikTok, we've got Singtel on stage. If you have any questions, please, uh, please get them ready. I'm going to ask a couple of questions here and then... Uh, Throw it, throw it to the floor and to the World Wide Web, of course. Um, so, so, Vanessa, um, you were talking about some great stuff going on in, in Indonesia and what have you, but moving maybe away from gaming, how exciting is 5G for TikTok? Well, 5G for us is amazing because, you know, video delivery, like content, video delivery of content is good for us. The, 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 the faster, the better that we can deliver content to our users, the better the experience, right? So, and you look at the, the program we're doing in Indonesia, we're doing it around MLBB, which is, you know, the, the leading mobile game in Southeast Asia. So, delivery of content, making things work smoother, lower latency, higher graphics, all the things that 5G bring just improves our user experience. And we want our users to have the best experience possible. So, you know, the, the developments in 5G are really good for us as, as, a, as a platform. Um, and I think they're good for gamers in general and for people who want content, right? It's the delivery of content on 5G that makes it more portable and people consume it in a better way. And Shilpa, kind of the same question, but I know that I can't ask you how exciting is 5G for Singtel because it's clearly exciting. <laughs> how exciting are platforms like TikTok for Singtel? Because you, know, you were a telco now, you're a media company, but... How exciting is something like TikTok? Uh, I think the, um, um, we, we believe in partnerships and collaborations. I think TikTok is an amazing platform. Uh, like Vanessa mentioned, 
a lot of um, original content that comes out of it, which we want to take it more to our, to our masses and our base. So we already work very closely with TikTok. But I do think, um, you know, areas like AR, VR is something that we could work together. There's a lot of content today that happens on the phone. And then, you know, imagine you, you're doing it in an alternate reality world and creating new content. I think there's a lot of stuff that uh, in that space that we could do together. Cool. So any questions from the floor which might stop the teenagers talking? We have TikTok and we have Singtel with us in the house. You've got to ask me questions. You know, whenever, whenever we don't go to questions, people hurl abuse at me for not going to questions. Sonny, do you want to ask about your mobile data package? <laughs> um, OK, so, so um, we can probably wrap this, 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 this session up. Um, uh, Shilpa, for, for Singtel at the moment, I mean, obviously 5G is hot and, and exciting stuff. What else is really exciting right now for Singtel here and now and going into the future? I think the, of course, um, the core of our business is the technology. So like you said, we are, um, everything becomes 5G backed, but we are very excited about our um, gaming's work, um, you know, including our PVP spots and eSports that we are planning to do. We are planning to host some of the tournaments this year. So I'm very hopeful that uh, you know, things market will open up, and you know, people will be here to play the and watch the esports in person. So I think uh, till the till for the next two three months, I think uh, I'm very hopeful uh, about some of those stuff. I think we are very excited about new content uh, coming in to that we can take it to our customers. Um, you know, whether it's the the usual content players of the world or TikToks of the world, and I think what we could do new uh, at the back of it, I think that's very exciting. Has anyone ever told their daughter to keep it down from live from the stage? <laughs> so, um, and the Super Gamer Fest as well, of course, that we all did, we all did together last year, 38 million viewers. And I'm hoping we are beating that record this year. I, I hope so too. Um, Vanessa, same question for you. Um, aside to 5G, I mean, TikTok is never, never changing, right? But what's exciting for you and your role for today and going into the, into the future? The thing that's exciting about TikTok is we're always pushing boundaries. And I think that's one of the most exciting things is we'll always try new projects, new ideas. Greatest Game is a brand new idea that we've done for Indonesia. We've just launched NFTs um, working with creators in the US. There's always new things happening and there's always ways for us to look at what our creators are doing and then in response to them. So a lot of the things we do is in response to our creative community and our community in general on TikTok. So um, there's so many just, I can't, I can't think of all the things, right? But NFTs is launched. We've got the greatest gamer going. We're doing lots of different projects all across APAC. Um, we've got some metaverse stuff happening in Korea. We've got, you know, a lot of projects happening. Kind of, we've got some AR and VR happening with, with Singtel here in Singapore. Um, there's just a lot of new things and new ways to, I guess, to push the boundaries. And that's what TikTok does really well is just test new boundaries and, and new ways of doing things. Never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Um, we apparently have a question from the floor. Harry. Ah, oh, hey. Harry's got the most unlucky microphone. Thank you. Hi. Um, I would like to ask a question about like local content. So since Singtel and TikTok is there, is there anything that we can do to help bridge the gap between uh, I don't know, fashion, culture, music, uh, like Singaporean style, you know? Chilpa. With gamers, of course. Um, I think um, we do a lot with uh, local gaming talent a lot. I think um, with PvP sports, we also actually groom quite a bit of uh, local gaming talent. Um, I think what we need more is beyond the developers, uh, more technology platforms coming in for uh, which can support our 5G uh, network and, and work at the back of it. So I think that would be, would be really interesting. 
Um, I think we've seen pockets of success. Uh, what we would like to see more is scaled uh, players coming in um, and having opportunities to, to do something at a more scalable level. And from a particular perspective, I think we're really um, invested in building out the creative communities in Singapore. Um, so in the gaming, the gaming uh, area and then other, other kind of genres and, and communities as well. So we spend a lot of time as a team working with different creators and we spend a lot of time with different organizations to you know, helping people to understand how to create better content, how to onboard, how to use the platform more, how to grow. And so we're very invested there. Creators are at the heart of everything we do. Um, so, you know, the greatest gamer in Indonesia, I'd love to do it in Singapore and really, you know, bring that to the Singaporean community. There's definitely ways of doing that. We've done lots of different executions or activations in food and beverage or in fashion or different, different um, sectors to really um, help Singaporean creators use the platform to the best of their ability. There is a creative, there is a very big creative pool here in gaming and in other, other platforms, other genres as well. So we are very invested in trying to stimulate that and help them get onto the platform. It's also something you could potentially put in the Gaming Matters Academy, which is coming soon. Um, thank, thank you very much for that, for that, for that question. So um, we're going to leave it there. We're going to wrap there. Um, some really cool insights coming there. I mean, again, congratulations on launching Indonesia uh, and good luck with, with, with rolling it out. Um, talking about being authentic, talking about being risk, taking risks. Um, and if 5G, if I can take any insight from 5G, it's really fast. Okay. So, Vanessa and Shilpa, thank you so much for joining us thank today. You. Brilliant thank to you. see you. Thanks, um, and next, we're going into the sports world. <laughs>